Hi everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. Now, in this particular example, I want to go over a banding technique, or, or more specifically, a dynamic banding technique inside of Power BI. How you can actually um, dynamically showcase segments of your information or bands of your, your, your information. Now, this is a really powerful technique to build upon your data model. Okay, so I've got a really simple data model here. Um, it's a you know, it's, it's not it's a bit of a mess because um, mm. of the way that Microsoft likes to set up things now inside of Power BI, which I don't particularly like, to be honest. But um, you know, basically, you know, I've got my sales and I've got all my lookup tables up the top here, right? Okay. Now, but you know, in a lot of cases, your lookup tables they don't have that much information. You know, they 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 only have in, the, in this particular example that we're going to run through. I've got my customer data here, right? But I want to be able to group my customers by some metric, but I want to do it dynamically because depending on my selection, these groups might, uh, the, the grouping will be different. You know, to say I'm selecting a different year or say I'm selecting a different product. Um, I want to be able to analyze my, um, uh, my results in these segments based on those selections that I, um, that I select in my model. Okay, so I'm also going to, in this particular case, add another slicer here so we can have a play around. With this information as well and you're going to see how many ways that you can take this especially when you combine it with a good model and um, uh, and multiple ways that you can filter your data right so there's plenty of different ways that i can filter this you know maybe i want to look at segments of my products for example um you know there's there's plenty of different ways okay but let's just go through the theory of how this actually works okay now if i'm looking at it by customer so, I, so look at if we just look at my simple calculation here total sales okay so in this particular case i've done uh, I've, I've created it with a simple sum x formula i'm just formatting this a little bit better okay so sum x i've had to go and retrieve the price from a different table um, in my products table to then times that by the quantity i've sold at every single transaction and that's what's giving me giving me my total sales that's sort of iterating functions 101 okay but now what i want to do is within a visualization, I want to be able to break out which of my customers are what I consider good growth customers, average growth customers, or poor growth customers, okay? So the key to recognize here is what, what year we're selected on, okay? And I'm gonna grab, uh, in this particular case, sales. I've gone and created a calculation of sales last year, okay? Because with this sales last year, see the simple calculate with a date add function in there, I'm calculating up my sales for the same customer, but in 2016 instead of 2017. From this information, I can then work out, okay, well, what is the percentage growth? Okay, so you see here, this is how I'm, what, basically what I'm trying to like highlight here is how you can build out to quite niche banding calculations, okay? Because in this particular case, I'm sort of branching out into this calculation and then I'm going to create my segments based on that. So you've got to remember that none of this data at all sits within any of my raw data tables, any of my lookup tables, etc. I'm creating this with measures and then we're going to segment and band and dynamically band based on this calculation. So it's a really, really powerful technique. Okay, so basically from here I can say, okay, well, yes, 103% growth. Last year we made 83,000. This year we made 17,000. So 103% growth. Okay, now down here, now this is where the segment really breaks out. We can break out, this is the same formula can be used in, in, in multiple different ways. Okay, um, in this particular case, this visualization here has exactly the same measure as this visualization here, and it just is just, just representing things in a slightly different way. It's still a dynamic calculation or a d dynamic um, segmentation technique, okay? And so you see how dynamically these are changing. And in a, in a second, I can sort of show, okay, well, we can actually break this down differently as well. Like we could also break this down by month and year if we really wanted to. Um, so maybe I'll grab month name here. Okay, and that is not sorted correctly, so I'll just I'll just sort that out while we're so month name we want to sort by um, month of year. Okay, so let's go through the formula. Let's go through the formula here. Now, um, 
what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how these days I actually bring this together, even though I've, I've already created this particular formula. But what I what I do now is if I don't have my formula, I go to the Analyst Hub. So you see here, I'm in the Analyst Hub. This is Enterprise DNA's application, web-based application. And we've got our DAX cleanup tool where you can actually save down all of your formulas, right? And so I've got my banding example here. I click on it and I've already got my formula set up. I can go copy code like so and then I can copy it into my model and it is um, already form formatted um, and um, easily easy to reference, okay? So you, you might in some cases need to change a few parameters inside the formula, but in this particular case, I've already got this one set up perfectly, so I don't need to do that, but you know, you might need to change sort of like what you've done here with your sales growth meter, measure, et cetera, et cetera, okay? One of the key things I you also need to do is you need to, if you want to do some dynamic segmentation, is you need to create a supporting table, okay? So what I did was I said, okay, well, I want to be able to segment based on this growth factor, right? So what I did was I then broke out my segments for that particular growth factor, okay? So I said great growth is between, you know, basically over 200% in a year. Average growth is between 30 and 200, and poor growth is less than 30%. Um, at thirty percent and under, and you see, I put these um, these arbitrary numbers just to sort of round round things off. But every every result is going to sort of be within that, okay? And so then, what we need to do, and so you've got to remember, the the, the, the key thing here, as, as I sort of mentioned earlier, is that we are building on top of our core model. None of this none of this data is being physically implemented in any table at all. We are basically doing this all on top of our model, which is which is how makes this technique so flexible. Okay, and so then what I'm doing is to create this calculation. Remember what what we are we are showing here. We we still want to calculate up total sales. Okay, we still want to calculate it up, but what we want to do is we want to be able to filter that sales result now by that supporting table that we created okay so this is the technique in which um, the formula technique that we need to use to be able to do that so what we what we're doing is we first of all we want to go through every single customer we want to evaluate what the customer's growth was okay because when we when we are within this formula and we filter go on values it's going to iterate through every single customer so the very first customer it's going to work out okay what was the sales growth of that customer is it greater than or equal to any of the mins in in this particular table or any of the maxes in this particular table okay and it's going to evaluate to true at one point there okay then we go to the next customer and then we evaluate is the sale growth greater than any, or equal to any of the mins or is it less than or equal to the max and then we go to the next customer and we go down this entire list virtually by the way this all happens virtually and then we return the sales based on whatever evaluates to true now the interesting thing is if i drag this particular result into here right everything evaluates to true at some point because there is no filter this, remember this table is not in the context at all in, inside of this particular table but in this particular table in this particular visualization here right this this particular visualization the scatter chart look what is in the context here that particular table that we created that customer segments table the poor growth average growth and great growth and so because this filter is in play in this visualization what is happening when we evaluate through this this long this formula this dax formula is that at each different point there is a lot that it will evaluate to false because this particular table is being um, virtually being uh, manipulated by the filters now in the scatter chart and so there's going to only be um, poor growth and there's only going to be average growth and there's only going to be great growth at some point and so a lot of these customers will evaluate to false and that's how we get these segments, these bands, within our visualization, okay? Now, there's a little bit to unpack there, um, but honestly, it's not that difficult if you just really understand the pattern that you need to use here. You need to use the supporting table, and then you need to input this pattern over and over again for whatever banding that you want, right? So the supporting table can be totally dynamic and flexible and based on any metric that you want. And then you just need to make sure that you actually input the correct metric inside of this evaluation through the table so that it, whatever customer in this case is um, has a chance to evaluate to either true or false.
okay and then you can return whatever metric you want as well this is totally dynamic too whatever you put in here might not be total sales it might be profits that you put in here it might be profit margins um, I, I believe that on the enterprise DNA um, uh, within our content you, we already we also have examples of that as well so something to to review at a later point and you'll see down here that again the same setup even though the colors are quite similar here but but even though you know even in this table um, we're looking at by customer because of you know even though this is basically showing the same thing here you got to remember that this legend is basically creating an additional filter some additional context on this specific visualization and that is why we are now getting by color a breakout of our poor average and great growth customers okay so that's all i wanted to show you um you know there, there's there's some really you know there's so many ways you can utilize this to like literally unlimited really um and so this is one of uh you know my most most used techniques just to highlight different looks and feels to um you know to insights that ordinarily you know don't sit within your data so you know very quickly you can add some value to your consumers you know so that you can show them things that they've probably never seen before okay so let's wrap things up uh, all the best going through this one and uh, utilizing this technique in the future. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.